two households, both alike in dignity, in fair Verona where we lay our scene, from ancient grudge break to new mutiny, where civil blood makes civil hands unclean. From forth the fatal loins of these two foes, a pair of star-crossed lovers take their life, whose misadventure to piteous overthrows doth with their death bury their parents' strife. The fearful passage of their death-marked love and the continuance of their parents' rage, which but their children's end naught could remove, is now the two hours' traffic of our stage, the which, if you with patient ears attend, what here shall miss, our toil shall strive to mend. If I profane with my unworthiest hand this holy shrine, this gentle sin, my lips to blushing pilgrims, ready to stand to smooth, rough touch with a tender kiss. <laughs> Good pilgrim, you do wrong with your hands too much. Which mannerly devotion shows this? For saints have hands that pilgrims' hands do touch, and palm to palm is holy palmer's kiss. Have not saint lips and holy palmer's kiss too? Aye, pilgrim, lips that they must use in prayer. Oh, then, dear saint, let lips do what hands do. They pray, grant thou less, less faith turn to, de to despair. Saints do not move, they grant for prayer's sake. Then, then, no, then move not while I, while my prayers affect, I, I take. <laughs> okay. But soft, what light through yonder window breaks? It is the east, and Juliet is the sun. Arise, fair sun, and kill the envious moon, who is already sick and pale with grief. That thou, her maid, art foul more fair than she. Be not her maid, since she is envious. Her vestal livery is but sick and green, and none but fools do wear it. Cast it off. It is my lady, oh, it is my love. Oh, that she knew she were. She speaks, yet she says nothing. What of that? Her eye discourages, I will answer it. I am too bold, tis not to me she speaks. Two of the fairest stairs, stars in all of the heaven, having some business do entreat her eyes to twinkle in their spheres till they turn. What if her eyes were there, they in her head? The brightness of her cheek would shame those stars. As daylight doth a lamp, her eyes in heaven would through the airy region stream so bright that birds would sing and think it were not right, were not night. See how she leans her cheek upon her hand. Oh, that I were that were a glove upon that hand, that I might touch that cheek. I, me. She speaks, oh, speak again, bright angel, for thou art as glorious to this night, being over my head as is a winged messenger of heaven, Unto the night upturned, wondering eyes of mortals that fall back to gaze on him, when he bestrides the lazy puffing clouds and sails upon the bosom of air. O oh, Romeo, Romeo, where art thou, Romeo? Deny thy father and refuse thy name, or if thou wilt not, be sworn but my love, and no longer, and I'll no longer be a Capulet. Shall I hear more, or shall I speak at this? Tis but thy name, that is thy enemy. Thou art thyself, not a Montague. What's a Montague? It is nor hand nor foot, nor arm nor face, nor any other part belonging to a man. Oh, be some other name. What's in a name? That which we call a rose by any other word would smell as sweet. So Romeo would, where he, not Romeo called, retain that dear perfection which he owes without that title. Romeo, doth thy name, and for thy name, which is no part of thee, take all myself. I take thee at thy word. Call me but love, and I'll be new baptized. Henceforth, I will never be Romeo. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> what man art thou that thus be screened in night, so tumblest on my counsel? By a name, I know not how to tell thee who I am. My name, dear saint, is hateful to myself, because it is an enemy to thee. Had I written, had I, had I it written, I would tear the word. Romeo. The love I bear thee can afford, no better term than this, thou art a villain. Tybalt, the reason that I have to love thee doth must excuse the appertaining rage to such a greeting. Villain, I am none, therefore farewell, I see knowest me not. Boy, this shall not excuse the injuries that thou hast done me, therefore turn and draw. I do protest, I never injured thee, but love thee better than thou canst devise. Till O oh, thou shalt know the reason of my love, and so, good Capulet, which name I tender, as dearly as mine own, be satisfied. O oh, calm, dishonorable, vile submission, 
Al Alastacata carries it away. Tibble, you rat catcher, will you walk? Thou wouldst thou have with me. Good king of cats, nothing but one of your nine lives that I mean to make bold with all. And as you shall use me hereafter, dry beat the rest of the eight. You will pluck your sword out of his pilcher by the ears. Make haste, lest mine be about your ears ere it be out. I am for you. Gentle Marcusia, put thy with you. Oh. Come, sir, your passato. Draw Benvolio, beat down their weapons. Gentlemen, for shame, forbear this outrage. Tybalt, Marcuccio, the prince expressly hath forbid this bandying in Verona streets. Hold, Tybalt, good Marcuccio. I am hurt. A plague of both your houses, I am sped. Is he gone and hath nothing? What, art thou her? Aye, aye, a scratch, a scratch, Mary, tis enough. Where is my page? Go, villain, vetch a surgeon. Courage, man, the hurt cannot be much. No, tis not so deep as well, nor so wide as the church door, but tis enough, twill serve. Ask for me tomorrow, and you shall find me a grave man. I am peppered, I warrant for this world, a plague of both your houses. Zounds a dog, a rat, a mouse, a cat, to scratch a man to death? A bragger, a rogue, a villain, that fights by the book of arithmetic? Why the devil came you between us? I was hurt under your arm. I thought all for the best. Help me into some house, Benvolio, or sh I shall faint. A plague of both your houses. They have made worms meet of me. I have it, and soundly too. Your houses! This gentleman, the prince's near ally, my very friend, hath got his mortal hurt. In my behalf, my reputation stained with Tybalt's slander. Tybalt, that an hour hath been my cousin, O sweet Juliet, thy beauty hath made me effeminate, and in my temper softened valor's steel. O Romeo, Romeo, brave Marcuccio is dead. That gallant spirit hath inspired the clouds, which too, untimely here, did scorn the earth. This day's black fate, on more days doth depend. This but begins, the woe others must end. Here comes the furious Tybalt back again. He gone in triumph, and Marcuccio slain. Away to heaven, respective lenity. And fire-eyed fury be my conduct now. Now, Tybalt, take the villain back again. That, that, that late thou gavest me, for Marcuccio's soul, is but a little way above our heads, saying for thine to keep him company. Either thou, or I, or both must go with him. You wretched boy, that disconsort him here. Shout with him hence. This shall. Romeo, away be gone. The citizens are up, and Tybalt slain. Stand not amused. The prince will doom thee to death. If thou art taken, hence be gone away. Oh, I am fortune's fool. Ah, dear Juliet, why art thou yet so fair? Shall I believe that unsubstantial death is amorous, and that the lean, abrid monster keeps thee here in the dark to be his paramour? For fear of that, I still will stay with thee, and never from this palace of dim night. Depart again, here, here will I remain, with worms that are thy chambermaids. O oh, here, why I set up my everlasting rest, and shake the yoke of insuspicious stars. From the world-wearied flesh, eyes look your last, arms take your last embrace, and lips owe you. The doors of breath seal with a righteous kiss. A dateless bargain to engrossing death, come bitter conduct, come unsavory guide. Thou, desperate pilot, now at once run on the dashing rocks, thy sea wick weary bark. Here's to my love. <laughs> Thy drugs are quick. Thus, with a kiss, I die. <laughs> What's here? A cup closed in my true love's hands. Poison I see hath been his timeless end. 
Oh, churl, drunk all and left no friendly drop to help me after, I will kiss thy lips. Happily, some poison yet doth hang on them to make me die. Oh, restorative, thy lips are warm. Then it'll be brief, oh, happy dagger. This is thy chef. <laughs> the rusty dagger. Where be these enemies? Capulet, Montague, see what a scourge is laid upon your hate, that heaven finds means to kill your joy with love. And I, for winking at your discords too, have lost a brace of kinsmen. All are punished. Oh, brother Montague, give me thy hand. This is my daughter's jointure, for no more can I demand. But I can give thee more, for I will raise her statue in pure gold, that whilst Verona by that name is known. There shall no figure as such rate be set as that of true and faithful Juliet. As rich shall Romeo's by his lady lie, for sacrifices for our enmity. A glooming peace this morning with it brings. The sun for sorrow will not show its head. Go hence to have more talk of these sad things. Some shall be pardoned and some punished. For never was a story of more woe than this of Juliet and her Romeo.